Welcome back to the first trade. The U.S. reported 600 deaths Sunday. That is actually the fewest since mid-April, according to data from Johns Hopkins University. Even so, the U.S. death toll from COVID-19 remains poised to surpass 100,000 this week, with more than 1.6 million cases. Globally, nearly 350,000 people have died. Total infections have now topped 5.5 million. But this morning, there is renewed hope for a vaccine. U.S. biotech company Novavax began injecting a coronavirus vaccine candidate into 131 volunteers in Australia with hopes of releasing a working vaccine later this year. Joining us now is the president of R&D at Novavax, Gregory Glenn. We're also joined by Yahoo Finance's Anjali Kemlani. Uh, good morning, everyone. Doctor, I'm going to start with you. Thanks for making time for us this morning. Uh, we're all curious, how is that a human trial going, and when do you hope to have some results that you can share with the public? Yeah, this is a big day for us to start uh, human testing. Uh, it's going well. Uh, you know, people want a vaccine, so obviously we have to rely on volunteers who are willing to have a vaccine tested, and we're very grateful for that. Uh, we expect to see the result in July. And now normally, uh, you may know this, but the development of vaccine can take for many years. Uh, you go from phase one to phase two to phase three. This trial is designed to be very compressed. We'll look at the results from this trial and move right into the next phase uh, in, in August timeframe. And the hope would be that during that second phase that we would determine that the vaccine is working well enough that it could be deployed. Dr. Glenn, Angela here. Um, so when you're looking at you know, the manufacturing of this, I know you're doing it at risk as well, like many others. Is, is that in part uh, sort of the strategy right now, looking to having many other candidates out there as well as yours in order to respond to this unprecedented pandemic? Yeah, I think, you know, with respect to us, uh, you know, the normal, again, the normal train of development is to do the early testing in animals, then go into humans. And once you've established the vaccines working, then you go into the very expensive ex uh, process to scale it up and manufacture. I can't tell you what a big thing it would be to claim that you could make 100 million doses. So to do that, we've doing, we're doing everything in parallel. So the manufacturing piece has now been scale is scaling up uh, in multiple sites uh, on the assumption that the vaccine is going to work. And you may have seen a few weeks ago, we had a $400 million grant approximately given to us by CEPI. And what that does is enable us to do that scale up of the, of the vaccine in anticipation that there'll be a large demand globally for, for our vaccine. Uh, doctor, uh, 100 million uh, vaccines, that's a, that's a lot of doses. Um, I understand that you have gotten funding, but how much more funding would you need to reach some of the estimates I've seen out there for next year if this does go through potentially 300 million uh, doses by the end of 2021? Yeah, I think the donors are there. You know, I think you can see the U.S. government is there. So as they see progress, they'll be there for the, the scale up. So right now, you know, we, we are, I think, safely operating on those assumptions The the you know, the the uh, the uh, plans for that grant, the requirements for the grant was to demonstrate and, you know, obviously it's still a plan with some feet on it, uh, but to demonstrate to funders that we could actually do that. And I think what our technology is very much lends itself to that. So we can use a very small dose of vaccine. And so therefore a run, a manufacturing run goes a long way. So if we're using five micrograms, and this I could just tell you, if you were to drop, put a drop of our vaccine on the table and let it dry out in a clear glass table, you couldn't see it. It's a, such a small amount. So the point being, dose sparing matters. That allows you to scale. So if you took a thousand liters and you had to use a very small dose, that can go a long way. So we're quite confident that our vaccine allows to dose spare, use small doses, and then the manufacturing facilities are at the scale that we can make uh, the kind of doses we're talking about. It's going to make a monumental effort. Um, and the, the funders like CEPI know that. The found, Gates Foundation is very interested. They want to see global access. So we've, we, are, we are fanned out across the world in different sites, uh, you know, either making or planning to make the vaccine. And that's the way to do it. It's have multiple sites, a dose sparing technology like we have, and a lot of confidence based on our historical experience that we can scale up. What about the, the type of vaccine itself? It's a different technology. We know that some others are working on a traditional vaccine routes and others are working on messenger RNA. So what is different about your vaccine? 
Yeah, we're kind of in between, aren't we? We're a recombinant vaccine. So we are able to look at the gene sequence of the virus. We can take the sequence of interest. The spike protein is, a, is the main target for everyone. The spike protein binds to the surface of a cell, kind of like a spacecraft docking. And that allows the, the injection of the genetic material of the virus into host cell. And then your, your lung cell becomes a virus factor, causing lots of inflammation and disease. Let's block that. If you can make the spike protein as a vaccine, you can make antibodies to the spike protein, you block that process. So we can make the spike protein. We get the gene, we read the gene off the internet. We can make a full length spike protein. So it looks just like it does in the virus. And we add an adjuvant, which increases the immune response. So I think of all the technologies out there, what I like about what we're doing is we can actually see the vaccine. We can characterize this exquisitely because the three dimensional structure is very important. And then, uh, you know, we can, make, uh, we can make a lot of it. So we know that, and we were talking about this before we got on, the immune responses we are seeing are well in excess of what we see in people who have infection. So I think that that's going to be now the standard we need to show, because that right now we, haven't, we don't have evidence in humans that's going to work. But if it's as immunogenic or gets an immune response as good as a human who's had an infection, we'd have to have a lot of optimism that that's actually going to protect people who have not had any infections, obviously. So prophylactic, we given in advance, can protect them against the virus. Doctor, the speed with which uh, your vaccine and others it would potentially come to market um, is, is wonderful on the one hand and very scary on the other. There are some folks out there who say, you know, uh, how can I trust a vaccine that's been rushed to market like that? What would you say to those people who have those concerns? And, and is there any way to know what possible side effects of this vaccine might be? So I can speak to ours first, maybe. So we are a mature technology. We just completed a phase three flu, pro, uh, flu trial. So that's a very advanced trial uh, and several thousand subjects. So it's, you know, from, from the immune standpoint, the vaccine looks the same. It's just a, it's a nanoparticle with this protein and our adjuvant. So those kind of side effects we see there, which look about like licensed vaccines are what we would expect with our vaccine. Now, when you talk about side effects, there's maybe two categories, sort of short term and long term. And so, you know, the, the vaccines can often give a sore arm or, you know, you feel a little awful, you develop immune response, but that's going to last for a short period of time. And then then you're, you're well. So we know these types of vaccines are very, very safe in terms of any adverse health outcomes. And that's always the, you know, the, the, the thing that's important to explain to people is that you know, the risk of somebody getting COVID uh, and having a sore arm or what you balance. And, you know, I can tell you as a doctor, this is a very bad disease to have. We talked, you talked early on about deaths. Uh, I've got a daughter who works in the, the you know, the uh, nursing uh, facility, uh, a hospital. The people who are sick are very, very ill. They may recover. It can take them months, maybe years to restore their life back to normal or never, they, they never get back to normal. So this is a very, very bad disease. We need to keep that in mind. It's not just deaths. It's the people who are getting this disease. They're debilitated. They're in the hospital. They suffer. And so you weigh those things against some side effects. In our case, it's a sore arm. Uh, you know, other vaccines less proven. I think that that is, you know, that's the, the less proven, the, the earlier the technology, the more you need to pay attention uh, to their side effects because they have to find the right dose. Uh, that is a balance between a good immune response and a side effect. And I think we know that about our technology, at least. So we, we anticipate, and that's, of course, one of the things we're defining in this trial is safety and immunogenicity. We need to monitor safety throughout the trials. I can assure you that every safety aspect of these, these uh, vaccines in the development phase are, are looked at extremely carefully. And if it were to be deployed, there's also a very robust reporting system. So we know if something's really gone wrong. So that's important uh, for people to know there's a lot of care uh, given to the safety of the vaccine and, and monitoring that throughout trials. And Dr. Len, you are a, a pediatrician, you said, so you know the importance of vaccines, but also their value. What can you tell us about, uh, you know, the things, the metrics, the, the you know, qualities that are going really quickly about what are going into the pricing of it and thoughts about the pricing of it and access globally, because there are concerns about, uh, you know, global access and where it will be distributed first and, and how companies like yourself, smaller ones, will be able to, uh, you know, profit off of this. 
Yeah, so just going back to your first point, I am a pediatrician. I went into vaccine development because I saw a couple vaccines licensed. They are miracles. They just, I saw a couple of very bad diseases, childhood diseases, go away when the vaccine became licensed. They really work. They've changed human history. So they're going to change the history here. I mean, this is a very bad situation, both from a health uh, standpoint, economic standpoint. We're at a standstill. We need to get out of that. We need to keep people from, from suffering as they are. So, so we signed a contract with CEPI, the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovation. They are really thinking ahead. So part of that is global access. And you know, from our, my standpoint, being the technical guy, I want to have a, a vaccine I can make a lot of doses. That will solve many ills, right? We want to have equitable dis, uh, distribution. We want to cover our own country make sure our own citizens, our own families are immunized. <clears throat> so we've spread out our, our manufacturing strategy to cover that. So I don't know, I think there's gonna be some, you know, uh, forward looking debate on, on pricing. It isn't, it's not a cheap process, you know, it takes a lot of investment. And, uh, but I, right now I think that's, you know, a complete unknown, it's a really good question. Don't press me on it, you can press other people, I think that uh, you know it can be it can be made in equitable ac access. We're we're a global health company. We want to see the poorest of the poor, uh, you know, get a vaccine as well as our our fellow citizens, in the United States. All right, let's leave it there. Uh, Novavax president of R and D, Dr. Gregory Glenn. Uh, important work that you guys are doing over there. Good luck with it, and uh, we'll we'll catch base. We'll catch up with you shortly. Thank you to our very own Anjali Kamlani as well. Thank you for your interest. Hey investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up to the minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance and information on how to manage your money every day wherever you are.